After Germany was defeated during the First World War, it lost this territory, and Belgium, despite suffering a harsh occupation for most of the war, only received these lands. But given that Denmark got all of this despite not fighting at all, why did Belgium get so little? So, as you'll know, Belgium didn't exactly have a good time during the First World War. And once it was over and Germany defeated, the question turned to what Belgium and others would get in terms of compensation. Some powers, like France and Italy, were keen on punishing the Central Powers territorially, whereas the United States wanted the territorial changes to be minimal and based mostly on demographic lines. Belgium was divided between French speakers in the South and Dutch speakers in the North, and so different politicians in the country had different priorities on which territory was rightfully theirs. For example, some French-speaking politicians there laid claim to these parts of France because they historically belonged to the Spanish Netherlands. Many in Belgium also argued that the Netherlands as a neutral country essentially helped Germany by allowing it to trade with the wider world. As such, it needed to be punished, which meant Belgium getting these lands. The reason why they chose them is that when Belgium was a part of the United Kingdom of the Netherlands, these regions were administered as a part of the South, but Belgium lost them after its independence. One thing you'll notice though is they also wanted this part here. There was no historic claim to the region, it was just an added extra to punish the Netherlands for not fighting. Some politicians there pushed for Luxembourg to either be annexed into Belgium entirely, or more likely pushed into a personal union with it. And thus it, and by extension Belgium, would gain these lands as compensation for Luxembourg's occupation during the war. And as for Germany, Belgium wanted compensation, and the initial plan was to push to get this. These were the only ideas for annexation that were even remotely mainstream, but there were some more extreme politicians and military leaders that argued for the annexation of these German lands up to the Rhine. So in the end, why did Belgium get so little despite wanting so much? Well, first of all, a lot of the things that some of its politicians were asking for were frankly nuts. The Entente were never going to punish the Netherlands for its neutrality whilst rewarding Denmark for its own. And the idea of Luxembourg being annexed or forced into a union with Belgium for the crime of also being invaded was laughable. Furthermore, one of the foundational principles the Entente held with respect to territorial changes was self-determination. The people who lived in the majority of these areas certainly didn't see themselves as Belgians, and so they were never going to vote to join. Another issue was that Belgian diplomats often couldn't agree themselves on what they wanted, and in the end they demanded so much that it offended their allies. This is why Belgium's gains were these in Africa and these lands here. These were lands occupied by Germans, but the Entente knew it needed to give Belgium something, and so transferred they were. And these Belgian lands were reliant on this railway. And so, Belgium demanded that it also be annexed, which it was. And this is why there's these weird clumps of German territory hanging out about inside Belgium. Belgium was also given token financial compensation and told essentially to shut up and deal with it. And so, for all of Belgium's trouble, this is what it gained. I hope you enjoyed this episode with a special thanks to my patrons, James Bizanet, Kelly Moneymaker, Sky Chappelle, Katoitska, Anthony Beckett, Rod D. Martin, Yudwan Wang, Marcus Arsner, Wyan Hockey, Alex Schwinn, AF Firefly, Captain Sidog, Spencer Lightfoot, Gustav Swan, The McWhopper, Shuenin, Marvin Cassow, Winston Kaywood, Spinning Three Plates, Andy McGeehee, Kamoon Yoon, Calling Dr. Howard, Dr. Fine, Dr. Howard, Todd Short, Copper Tone, Maggie Patskowski, Words About Books Podcast, Jim Strunberg, Miss Izzet, and Charles the First. 